I, I basically, my, when we came to the United States, um, my parents decided that um, they were afraid that, um, that I would begin speaking, um, begin school speaking uh, either Spanish or German. And so they uh, spoke to me exclusively in English. And by the time I was uh, eight years old, I, I probably knew or remembered less than 50 words in Spanish. Um, fortunately, my mother was a, a secretary for Pan American uh, World Airways, which is now a, a, a famous show, I hear, <laughs> on television, Pan Am. Uh, and um, we were given free tickets to go home. So every summer I spent with, with my family in Guatemala. And it, it, for me, that was um, basically uh, being uh, plugged into um, to a life force that I was not finding in, in, in Miami. So for me, uh, I write almost exclusively about Guatemala. Um, and um, one of the reasons for that is because um, the shock of coming to this country was so huge that, that I would say that most of my mind was operating um, and alive in Guatemala, even when I was going to school and studying for a math test. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I felt very deeply connected to my, to my roots and became more so connected through these, you know, two month sojourns in Guatemala. When you, you started writing poetry, uh, what language you wrote poetry? I only write in English. Um, and um, I, I wasn't reading the great San Francisco poets. I was uh, reading the great romantic poets like uh, Shelley and Keats and Wordsworth. But I've written only exclusively in English. Um, and you know, as I was mentioning to Jessica, I, I've uh, published four books. And uh, three of the books have been published in Spanish um, and are um, can be found in Latin America, and I've only published two books in, in the English language. So uh, it's, it's very strange for me to, um, to be writing in English and publishing more in Latin America than I am in this, in this country. We'll go back to we'll that, back to uh, that. Uh, because that's a very, very <coughs> interesting point. That you are one of the most well-known, most important Guatemalan writers uh, alive, and you read in English, and that's a very unusual situation, right? Uh, Jessica, how was, in your case, I mean, it wasn't a, much of a, um, a shock to come to the United States, right? It wasn't that kind of, not in the sense that, that, I think that, that David was said. Old. Maybe it was worse in a weird kind of way, because I, um, that's interesting that it, it, it um, and also David went back more often. I didn't go back for a long, long time, because um, I was quite angry at um, the way my parents' marriage had ended, and I felt that um, it was my father's fault. Of course, I learned later that it's never one person's fault, but I was much too young to understand that. So I equated going back to the Philippines with having to deal with him, so I didn't for, for until I was in my mid oh no, my early 20s. So it, there was like a 12-year thing where I refused to go home. I would see, I say home. Um, and then you wrote uh, Dog Eaters that much some critics, later in life. much later, but yeah. some critics have said is the, the ultimate Manila novel. Uh, well, I don't know if everybody would agree with that, but they've said it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, <laughs> something that you said about that novel that also is appropriate for, for toxicology, and is that you, in an, in an interview they made you uh, about uh, Dog Eaters, that the collage was the best way in, in that you thought uh, to approach a city like Manila, to write about a city like Manila. And it's not exactly collage what you have in toxicology, but it's, it's not a linear narrative. Why don't you define a bit how the structure of toxicology, which I found really very interesting. Well, you know, I think even if I wanted to write a linear narrative, I couldn't. I just don't think like that. So, I, you know, uh, toxicology opens with the death of a movie star, a beloved young movie star in present day New York, and it takes the city sort of, um, the, 
entire city is sort of stunned by this news, and this is a time when everybody's a scandal. You know, yeah. scandal's not new, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. all over the place. And, but there is something about this young actor that really touches many people, and um, it sets the story. You know, and the story uh, really happens, the present day stuff, over the course of a week. You know, so I love the idea of having that um, structure, you know, that, that sort of like limitation. Mm -hmm. But I do veer off into the voices of there's also an illegal um, a woman who works for a family who's in the country illegally and she is murdered. And so her ghost speaks. There's a lot of ghosts in this novel and I love ghosts. So my thing was like, well, why shouldn't they? step in and right. tell their version of the story even if they're dead you know, you know I, I found reading your novel that it was uh, you know basically in my mind a, a New York novel I mean it's like how to write a novel about New York today <laughs> and uh, toxicology comes very close to that oh, I mean, thank you. and uh, it's a tough city to write about I think like Manila <laughs> yeah but Interestingly, it's not that you set out to write that, the New York novel, yeah. but in the way you put together those characters, and, and they end up being so quintessentially today's New York, and at the same time, you have this, you read the passage uh, from Mexico, it's, it's so intertwined, yes. the present day story with, with Mexico and with Philippines, and, yes. and the Philippines, and why don't you talk about, a, a bit about that? How, how is that connection, how you find the connection between the Philippines and Mexico? Well, I feel like we really have a shared history. Uh, the first time um, I, I went to actually to Mexico City, I felt like, oh my God, this is sort of like Manila. And I just surrendered to it, you know, and I felt very at home. Yeah, you said that also in another interview that you find over the years that Latin America, the yeah, I did a lot of uh, <laughs> reading for this. It was really, yeah. but th that that uh, when you were younger, you thought of Manila and Fil the Philippines as a, an Asian country and nothing to do with the uh, Hispanic heritage or Latin America. And uh, over the years, you have to you have come to well, to I've come feel to understand it more. I think I was in a hostile place with um, you know we had this thing about Spain, mm -hmm. you know, um, and my my grandfather is from Spain and. Um, I saw it as a forbidding thing. I associated it with the oppression of the church, although now I realize I'm, the church will never leave me. You know, and mm -hmm. Once I, a Catholic, always a Once a Catholic, a Catholic always a Catholic. Um, so I, it actually has fed my work you know, in a lot of weird ways, maybe in the more perverse ways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, Which um, is very <laughs> apropos. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it was a refusal to deal with, um, isn't my voice loud enough? Damn, my heavens, but tell me if you can't hear me. But um, yeah, it was a refusal to deal with right. sort of being part Spanish and um, associating it with the people who had oppressed the Filipinos. So it was pretty crazy. But it's also the